Hello and welcome back to All Things Money. I'm your host, David Blaine. Thank you for joining us today, our second segment of the show. We're going to talk a little about unemployment and some of the jobs that are out there that uh, employers can't find uh, people for. Uh, during the first segment, we talked a little bit about some uh, Zynga stock and, and people getting burnt on that. We talked a little bit about the power outage in uh, India, as well as uh, Jeremy Lin saving a million dollars by getting traded from New York to the Houston Rockets, saving a million dollars on tax. If you missed it, head on over to the web, dlblaine.com, and we'll post archived copies of the show there in, in a couple days. I wanted to get into this. Um, one of the things we see with unemployment, you know, unemployment remains very high. And part of the problem is a mismatch between the skills of the people looking for jobs and the jobs available. And there's two stories here. One, small firms seek skilled workers but can't find any. And the other, a related $100,000 factory job, what's uncool about that? And so the first one talks about how um, it, it's not just the big manufacturers, oil companies, railroad companies that are struggling to find qualified workers. Um, small firms are having a hard time finding employees. That, there was a profile of this company called Group One Safety and Security um, that has a help wanted sign out. They constantly are having a hard time finding uh, employees. The president, they install alarms and video surveillance, says he um, frequently declines new work because he can't find qualified people to do the installations. That for fire and burglar alarm technicians, that these jobs have been open for nearly 18 months. He can't find people with the skills. Um, according to um, a survey, about 31% of 811 small business owners uh, interviewed said they had unfilled job openings in July because they couldn't identify applicants with the right skills or experience. This was done by um, the Wall Street Journal. Similarly, about 41% of 154 manufacturing firms answered the survey said they couldn't find applicants with re relevant experience or skills. 30% um, of the service businesses and 29% of the retail businesses. So you see this big mismatch between what companies are looking for and the skills that people have. And it's a combination of they're not getting uh, taught in college, they're getting the wrong degrees, or simply, uh, as I've always said, there's nothing wrong with going to a vocational school, two-year degree, things like that to learn a skill that employers need. You know, they don't need... Uh, you know, everybody doesn't need a degree in communications or um, social work or I don't know, whatever. They need people with very specific skills that they can put to work right away in their company. Um, and part of the thing with unemployment is people get paid unemployment to look for a job that instead of retraining people, a lot of this money I feel like should be spent on retraining people uh, or frankly lowering the tax rates, lowering the corporate tax rates so that they can afford to hire people and train them. And it's especially tricky at small businesses. Let's say you have uh, five employees and you know you have one vacancy. Well that's 20 percent of your workforce. I mean hiring the wrong person can be devastating to a small business like that and so they tend to look for that perfect person with the skills. They don't have a lot of time and money to train that person. And so instead of paying people to sit at home and file for unemployment, in my opinion, they should cut people's taxes, let the employers have more money, maybe some tax breaks, something like that, to e help educate and train employees that they could, they could benefit from, from a job. In a related story, uh, this was um, came out of CNN Money, where they talked about, um, they said that young people think that factory jobs are uncool. And, you know, factory jobs, once considered, you know, back-breaking, labor, low-paying, are really high-tech and high-salary today. But a lot of these factory owners say that young people don't get it. Um, this one owner owns Chesapeake Machine Company in Baltimore. He says, when I was in the late 70s, kids were dying to get in manufacturing. There are plenty of factory jobs. There are jobs for the taking today, but kids don't want them. In fact, I had a roommate at West Point whose brother uh, lived in Reading, Pennsylvania. 
and there was a big uh, steel plant there, Dana Corporation, and they, they made um, parts for uh, cars and things like that. And he was like 22 years old. He worked at this factory, and he, he, he made a decent living. He, he owned a house. You know, he had a car. He had no debt. Now, he didn't go to college, but he had a decent living and had a, had a decent job, and it was, it was actually a good, a good thing for him to do. Um, today, you know, TV and the media and things like that don't have a lot of positive images about manufacturing. So even though some of these jobs are still available, that kids don't want them. Um, an aspiring machinist, according to this uh, study, uh, can start training at 18, do a one or two year manufacturing apprentice, and in five years could be making more than 50000 In 10 years, it could double to $100,000. So if you do the math, that turns out to be a 28-year-old kid. Now, there's no college degree, but there's nothing wrong with that. How many 28-year-olds with a college degree in English literature or something do you know are making $100,000? Not a lot. Um, you know, now the days of maybe $75, $100 an hour workers are, are much more difficult to find, but certainly, you know, $30 an hour, $40 an hour is still very realistic. And... Uh, if we would encourage people to continue to go into these fields and not lock everyone into a four-year degree, I think we would see that some of these more jobs would, would become filled. So anyway, two good stories about unemployment. There are jobs out there. Uh, it's just the skills of the workers aren't matching uh, what uh, we need in this modern economy. Well, that brings us to our second break. When we come back, we'll continue uh, with all things money. Money. <laughs>